So, uh, this is SUM TV live today at Broaders Park. Uh, we have a break from the league today and we welcome back Baseford United in the FA Trophy. Uh, wow, you well, got it right. I know, well I did done. it this time. Well, well done. I, I consider them calling something else just out of... Uh, Anyway, that doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, so we got, we, we've got Neil again, and we've got Swampy with us. And we're going to talk quickly about uh, the Gainsborough game, obviously. Um, so just going back to your comments before the games game, Neil. Um, we expected three points. You said you expected three points. We didn't get that. It was a much-changed Gainsborough team. And you said we brought in a new manager. There was a bounce back, and they got that, didn't they? I mean, credit to Gainsborough. You have to do. You know, the, the uh, Curtis on what he said to his players before the game, and it was kind of, you got one chance to show me if you want to play for the club. So everyone raised the game slightly. I thought they run out of steam in the second half because the fitness levels aren't as good as ours. And, and Curtis said the same thing. But we 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 uh, we didn't play well first half. You know we're not going to try so we didn't play well. We didn't uh, put our own stamp on the game. We changed a couple of things at half time. We made the subs, and, and I thought second half that was more like my side. And you know probably if the game went on five minutes longer, we would have won it. But we didn't. You know, and, and we'll take a point. And it's just another you know slight you know slight bump in the road, if you will. But but on the whole, you know, happy. It's another game unbeaten, and it, and it sets it up nicer for today. Uh, any comments from yourself? Yeah, I'm saying a, a number of players came in, uh, replacing uh, a suspended player, and equally, then you made the substitutions. But how were you, how pleased were you with the the attitude and application of those that players that came in to do a job in a, in a very difficult game? I mean, if you look at obviously the one who suspended, Lou Griffiths, he's he's been exceptional of late. Uh, it was big shoes to fill, and you know, young Jack, who hasn't played as much football as what he would like, has, has gone in there. You know, on reflection, you know, I'm asking him to do a job maybe that he, he's not over comfortable with. So I'll I'll accept that. You know, maybe I should have played Ash Young looking at it. But but you know, all the lads in there are they're right behind each other, they're hungry, they want to play games. Even when I made the two substitutions, we have a saying in the dressing room that it's not personal, it's professional. So, you know, we'll always talk about the reasons why we've had to change it. And the lads have all bought into it. I mean, just come out of the dressing room now, they're all they're all in really good spirits today. Even the lads who are on the bench are in really good spirits. Uh so you know, and that's the that's signs of a really good knitted squad and you know I think they're getting better every time they come together and we talked about uh, last week about injuries uh, just uh, news uh, everyone's still asking the question what actually has happened to Paddy Wharton so the, the, basically he was at a children's party uh, he's, he was on the trampoline he's tweaked his knee ligaments uh, he's in and out he's been back on Thursday he's still not ready six to eight weeks but uh, but no Paddy's still you know he's still around the club <laughs> he'll be here today and hopefully we'll have him back fit because we've only got camp for another two weeks unless we can extend his loan deal so we're hoping that you know, we're hoping we can extend Cam's loan deal, but if not, then Paddy will come, come straight back in. And the game itself last week, what was very nice to see is uh, we were talking about Elliot Simos uh, last week and about the, on the Friday he actually played uh, and contributed to a, a draw uh, for Barnsley. And he was here on the Saturday. How, how does that make you feel as a manager where players are coming back and basically want to watch FC United, you know? Really proud. I mean, I, I said, you know, what the first time I saw the kid play, I went straight to the board and said, you've got to put him on a contract. He will play in the Premier League and I've no doubt he'll play in the Premier League. And uh, my son and myself on the Friday night watched Elliot, you know, come on and, and create the equaliser. And I dropped him a little message and, and it didn't surprise me he was here. The lad's got his feet on the ground. He knows what this club did for him. We know what he did for us. And, you know, it's just a wonderful talent with his, with his, and such a lovely lad. And, you know, we want him to go on and be successful, but it shows what we're doing here. You know, we're doing things the right way. And, you know, when you get a championship player coming back to the club on, on the Saturday when he could easily do something else, shows everything about what we're doing and, you know, testament to the lad Elliot. It's a great example as well for the other players, isn't it? Absolutely. You know, we, we've made no secret about it. We've, you know, we've, we've got Tundi who signed a contract and we know that there's a couple of league clubs coming here today. Uh, we're in talks with another player behind the scenes about a contract. But these lads, I've no doubt if they move on, they'll come back here, you know, because it's special, it's special times. You know, we've got a special team and, and they create special memories and, you know, the fans love the likes of Tundi, etc. And, you know, we'll only go when, if the offer and when the offer's right. But you'll, you can never forget you know, some of the experience he's had in such a short space of time, you know, if it was Tundee, I've no doubt he'd be back, like Elliot, you know, like other players, because, you know, they, they think a hell of a lot of this club. Yeah, well, Kurt Willoughby, even uh, three or four weeks ago, was at the Staley Bridge game, he's out injured, uh, wasn't playing for foul, and he, come, he came to watch, you know, FC away from home. So, again, it gives you an idea of what the club actually means to those players that have left. And he was my first phone call on Thursday night. You know, Kurt went under the knife, he had an operation on Friday uh, on a double hernia, but I rang him Thursday night, and he just meant so much to him to, to you know, we, we just don't, Ship players in and ship players out. We, you know, it's a real family feel to what we do in that dressing room, and, and whether or not you've you know you've created memories here. And like you just said, Kurt came down the other week to support FC United. You know, and to see the lads, but to support FC United. Elliot Smalls came out to support FC United, uh, and that's what we're creating. You know, we're creating that, so it's really good to see. We're creating a, a, an environment that can support and kickstart and continue players' careers. 
I've made no secret about this. You know, I don't want lads to, to use this club as a revolving door. You know, I want to build something really special here. Yeah. And, you know, the lads that are out there, you know, I've mentioned two or three years, you know, when the good, when FC had the good times and they could, you know, they rammed off the consistent players. I'm now, I'm now speaking to the fans before the game and they're going, same back four in Doyle and Jones and Don and, and Morris. And, yep. you know, it's really nice to hear Griffiths back in, it's Tundee playing. And, you know, lads are really enjoying the football. And, and it is, it's a special place to play football, but we will attract... Uh, will attract attention from other people because the way we do things right. You know, I like to think I do things right. The lads do things right, uh, and you know. But it's got to take a big, big club. You've seen that. You know, no, no disrespect to Chorley, but they couldn't entice Tundi away. So that says a lot about FC United yeah. uh, against teams in the uh, in the National League. On to squad news and injuries for today. Then, Any, anything you can tell us going into the game? Yeah, obviously, you know the deal we've got with Curran. Uh, he's only available for uh, league games and, and, and local cup competitions. The FA Trophy, the FA Cup, unfortunately, has to be cut tied. So Alex goes out, and I feel a bit sorry for Alex because he's having a bit of a stop-start time at the minute. He's trying to get his fitness, but he's he's in one game, he's out the next. He's tiring at 75 minutes. But I spoke to Jim. You know, we're, we've extended Alex's deal. You know, he's going to be here till mid-December. I, I wouldn't be surprised if we extended again. Uh, so Alex, Alex goes out today. Uh, but apart from that, you know, every, everyone's fully fit. You know, apart from Paddy Wharton, who's out injured. Uh, you know, everybody else is he's fully fit. So you know, it's been difficult this week. Got Luke Griffiths back in, uh, but we've we've the way we've lined up in training, all the lads have known the team on you know Thursday night, so they could prepare themselves well uh, and get ready for today. We know about Baseford. We know the the quarter that possess possibly the best footballing team actually in the division. You know, no disrespect, disrespect to anybody else. Um, so you'll prepare the players in the right manner this afternoon. Um, I want to ask you about psychology, though, because we saw something uh, before the game where uh, Baseford brought a tape measure with them, and that tape measure was to measure the length of hopefully a world record goal. Uh, now, that might sound like, you know, it's a bit of fun, but it's a little bit disrespectful, do you not think? And uh, can you tell me what... I mean, you brought the players out. Why did you bring the players out? I think it's things that... Circus mentality, to be honest. You know, if you're going to do that, get here far earlier. I came out here and they're laughing and joking and taking pictures. And you know, if that's the way they want to prepare, that's fine. But I'm in a point of getting my lads out of the dressing room. And if they if they needed any more motivation, which they don't to in today's game, I said, look at this. You know, is this a football game or is it a circus show? And the lads have uh, they've taken that to heart. You know, I I know it's a goal. You know, and I know it created a lot of attention. But it happened a couple of weeks ago, and people have put that one to bed now. To turn up today and. No, it's not me. It's not the way I do things. And, you know, their managers rightfully apologise to me. You know, it's, it's the media team, etc. But to me, it's just an added incentive for our lads to go out there because you just... Uh, me, personally, I wouldn't do that. And I don't think you do that in football. So. Well, it's, it's interesting that you say that their managers actually, you know, uh, apologise because, it, you know, football in matters are what's, what are important. That was a little bit of a circus show. And uh, hopefully, you know, they'll learn the lessons from that because, yeah, it, it was a special goal. But at the end of the day... They could have done things differently, but they didn't, and they chose to do it in front of everybody. But I think the psychology that you've used there to bring the players out, as you say, they don't need any more motivating. Well, that's an added incentive now to really, really go there today and, and win this game. Yeah. I'll agree with that. You know, you use as a manager, you use any tools you can do, you know, to pro your lads. And, and they gave me a tool that I didn't have my toolbox before the game, which is slightly naive, uh, but I don't think it was management led, and that's why Steve apologised. But, you know, we've had words about it with the lads. What I will say about today's game, uh, Swampy, we've, we've done a lot of work in training this week. We know that they play a diamond. We know that uh, if we can force the ball out wide so their number two and number three get on the ball, we've kind of done our job. They like to play through what I call the thirds and down the middle. So we've done a lot of work on our distances, uh, our shape, in and out of possession this week, religiously on the training ground. And, you know, the lads have all taken it on board. And even as last night, you know, there's diagrams, there's pictures going in our little WhatsApp group. Lads are taking on information. They all know the jobs, you know. So, you know, if it doesn't go according to plan, it won't be for the want of preparation and trying. But I've got a good feeling about today. You know, I had a good feeling last week and we didn't win it. But I don't know. There's just something about Baseford, who are a fantastic football inside. Yeah. I think maybe, you know, on reflection, what I've seen this season, probably the best team. But we're not far off that either. And we showed in spells against Baseford that, that we're equally as good as them. So I think it sets itself up to be, to be a good game. And if my lads turn up, then I, I, I hope we're in the hat. We said that on the day. We said, you know, it wasn't as if we played badly on the day during the league game. It's just that, you know, they, we came up against a slightly better team that took his chances. Yeah, uh, I, I think you're right, Keg. I think uh, from a radio perspective and a television perspective, you watch a good quality team and you can't help but admire a good quality team. On the day, yeah. And when you play not 
pretty much an eight out of ten as a, as a team yourself, and you're still beaten. You can't you can't actually feel too disappointed, you know, because there are teams in this division, and we've seen with Baseford again this week. They've gone out, they spent they spent the money, you know, uh, four figures sum and a centre forward who was at Gainsborough until uh, midweek, and you know, so they they've got ideas uh, of where they want to be. Um, and as I say, it's. Uh, it's no disrespect getting beat by a better team on the day, but again, if the quality football is played, Neil's happy, aren't you? And the, and the fans are happy on the terraces. And, and I think if you look at you know the last 16 games, and we keep documenting we've lost three games, to South Shields, to Warrington and to Baseford, you know, all teams that are going to be in and around it with, yep. with big budgets, you know, that's not a disgrace for me. And, and then in the manner that we got beat against Warrington, we, we knew what we had to do and we bounced back and then we beat Warrington. Yep. You know, we could have quite easily taken something from South Shields, but we didn't. And we could have quite easily taken something from base, but we didn't. So we're not far away. You know, we're, we're developing quicker than what I thought. And we're not far away. And today, you know, minus current, I'd probably say this is my strongest team I can put out. Just one more thing then about form, really. And it's something that we've talked about on and off since we moved here. Home form and away form. What are your thoughts on that? Because away, as you said last week, that's a, sh a, a, a good demonstration of the character and strength of the team away. Is that our, our best results, run of form, is away, isn't it, at the moment? Yeah, it is. I mean, you know, I think we're the best away record in the division, which is, you know, something definitely to shout about. But that fear's gone. You know, that, that negative feeling that maybe the squad had here last year where we couldn't win a game. You know, we're, we're performing really well. We're winning games of football at home. We're entertaining. The crowd are really getting behind us. Yep. And, you know, this is a special place to play. And last year, I had a bit of a feeling that the lads kind of a bit apprehensive about playing at home. I don't know why, because I, I absolutely loved it. This group, complete roles reversed. They're so excited about being back at Broadhurst Park. You know, they can't wait. Even for training, they turn up and they respect the facilities, they admire the facilities and, you know, they want to showcase themselves and, and today will be no different. You know, my team are ready. We're excited to be at home again. We're excited to, to hear the noise levels of the crowd and, you know, we're, we're all desperate to win this game of football today. And, and, and finally, I mean, uh, if the game does go to a replay, that's Tuesday night, uh, a long journey and a difficult journey uh, in, in midweek. How are you going to prepare the players for that if we do go to the replay? The first thing is I don't want a replay, you know, and, and this will be this will be slightly different from uh, from a league game because we're, we're going to go out hammer and tong. Uh, but if we do get a replay, obviously we we then need to we need to prepare for that in the right way, and I'm sure that the club will arrange the transport for us to do that. And lads have got to get themselves off work, but you know, hopefully it'll be finished today. Well, uh, I mean, we ran out of time last time on the game. I think I think we're about to we're about to finish early because because we're live. But thanks for joining us. It's no, no an absolute yeah, pleasure. Cheers, and no I'd just problem. like to say well, thank you for wasted. everyone out there for the positive feedback you gave. We think this is a really good way of of the supporters and the fans seeing something on the match day and getting involved when they can't get to a game and also seeing what's going on behind the club and your thinking what we'd like to do if we get the feedback is is to bring back any any points fans want to raise and ask you within this forum i think that's the best way to do it you know the more transparent we can be uh, as a football club then th then we'll be in a better place and you know maybe i don't want the fans to get bored of seeing my face but maybe as the weeks progress you know we get different people from the management team maybe different players up here to just hear different perspectives but that shows how together we are so you can get you'll get the same consistent messages whether or not it's myself brian richardson dave chadwick michael faulkner uh etc sat up here so so no you know any feedback is positive uh but i'd like to think that everyone's together and you know the feedback will be used in in the appropriate ways but we're enjoying this we're enjoying it Excellent. absolutely guys if you, uh, everyone out there if you're if you're watching this and you've watched the game or you listen to the game or you want to know anything about the background of the club Message us. We'll find some more official ways of doing this than over the forum. But uh, send us a message via the threads on the forum and we'll consider it and we'll put it to Neil and the rest of the staff on these programmes. So thanks very much again. Thanks, Swampy, for joining Cheers. us. And uh, we'll see you again in about three weeks. FC United are on their travels for a few weeks after this. Thanks very much. Thanks, Take care. Thanks a lot. Brilliant. Brilliant. Excellent. That's Swampy. <laughs>